Hello YouTube and welcome to another tutorial. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do the whip cut effect like in this video. <gasps> so let's get started. There are two ways to do this effect. There's an in-camera way and then there's a way to fake it in compositing. The first way I'm going to show you is the in-camera way and you can do this in any video editor you want. I'm using DaVinci Resolve right now but you can do this in HitFilm or Premiere or whatever. The first thing I'm gonna do is import my footage, change it to match, go to edit, and drop my footage in timeline. Okay, now that we have our footage in DaVinci Resolve, I'm gonna scrub through to the point where I whip the camera which is right there. Go about halfway through it, and then hit B to get the cut tool. Cut it right there. Hit A to go back to the selector. Select my footage, hit Shift backspace to ripple cut so that this fills the gap. And then move to about halfway where the, um, uh, where the whip would be in your second footage, which would be there. All right, and then do the same thing. And now you have your whip cut. Now, you may need to add, oh, cut off a little too much there. So I'm just gonna bring it forward a bit. Hit in to turn off snapping. Do that, hit in to turn it back on and move that over so that now there we go. Now we have our whip cut. Now you might need to add in a whooshing noise or some sort of sound to set it off because if it's just silent, let me turn the audio off, then it doesn't look very good. It doesn't really sell it. But with the audio on, you have that whooshing noise and then you have me gone, huh, after I teleport. And then it kind of sells the effect. Now the second way is to fake that with two static shots. And to do that, I'm going to go into Fusion. Okay, and now that we are in Fusion, it is time to start compositing on our whip cut. And the first thing we are going to need to do is to add a merge. You can do that by hitting Control Spacebar and typing in Merge. Or you can right click, Add Tool, Composite, Merge. Either or, I just like the control space bar method because it's faster. And then you have your foreground knob and your background knob. And you can tell which one it is by hovering over and seeing the tooltip. So then I'm gonna right click and drag to the background, right click, drag to the foreground. So now my car shot is in the foreground because that's what I want to pan over. I'm gonna move it out of the shot so that's going to be at 1.5 over here with the merge node selected. And make sure that your knob is over there. You can bring it up by hitting 2 on your keyboard also in this window. Or if you want the other window, hit 1. So I want it to pan over at frame 120. So I'm going to move that over to 0.5. I'm going to right click animate, move it back, let's have it last three frames. So right there, right click, set key, over here at 120, I'm going to set it back to 0.5. So now my car shoots in over three frames from 117 to 120. But now we need to move this shot out. And there's no option over here in the merge node to move the background shot out. So we are going to have to select, oh, wrong one, this one, and add in a transform. And the transform node at 117 will stay there. So we're going to hit animate at 117. Then we're going to move forward to 120, which is when it should be out of frame, and change this to negative. 0.5 on the X. So now what we should have is 
our car coming in and quickly replacing the cell phone shot. But that doesn't look like a pan, does it? That just looks like it's transitioning over. To sell the shot, we need to add in a directional blur. Again, hitting control spacebar. And now we're gonna animate the blur. View it over there on this viewer. Starting at 117. Actually go back to 116. For length, hit animate. And then go to 117 and turn up the length quite a bit. And then go over to 120 and hit this little knob to set it back down to zero. So now we have, boom. Whoop. And you can add more blur if you want to. But you see our blur gets a lot less by 119 and we don't really want that. So I'm gonna turn the blur up some more Make sure it stays out, stays there throughout the pan. We have this start at 110. Oh, wrong one. All right, so now we have our pan. And if you don't like the speed that it's going, you can come over here to your timeline editor and you can do some retiming, have it last a bit longer. So then now it goes, whoop. And that personally to me looks like a bit better speed. And I want the blur to fade off a little bit. So I'm gonna grab this, this is for the directional blur and move it back a frame so that it tapers off a little bit better. Now I'm going to go to the spline editor, do the transform, the merge, and the directional blur, select all of these, and click smooth so that the motion is just a bit better. And there you go, you have faked a whip pan. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. If you have any questions, leave them in the description below. Next week, I will be covering how to do a blind eye effect infusion, much like film rights one, because I thought that was a really awesome effect. So stay tuned for that. Um, and until next time, go make something awesome. See you then.